Hey guys, uh, I wanted to make a quick video going over uh, this boat project I've been working on. I've been meaning to make a video for a while on this, but I've been really busy, so um, I have a little bit of extra time right now, so I figured I'd uh, go over this. So here's the hull I made. This is made of um, just balsa wood, so uh, I can't pick it up right now because I just fiberglassed it and the resin is still drying. But the, um, the outside is made of one sixteenth inch also, and then the formers are made of one eighth inch, and then there's a couple different um, stringers, which basically go along go along the edges, and that's made of this uh, airplane spruce. Um, so that's that's the hull, and this is actually for an engineering project we're doing. Uh, it basically has to go around this pond fountain thing in our, on our campus. It's called the Great Naval Orange Race. Uh, so basically what I'm doing, I'm just trying to get to go as fast as humanly possible. So in order to do that, I picked up this jet. This is a little um, RC boat jet, no, just like a jet skate, so it tucks it in the bottom and then shoots out of the back. And there's a nozzle that goes on this uh, once it's like mounted. And it originally came with this motor. And this is just a little generic 7 volt motor. And didn't really have too much torque, didn't really have too much power. So I went ahead and hooked this up to the jet. And the way I did that, since the screw holes were different uh, like lengths apart, I had to make a custom acrylic mount. And I basically measured it out with some calipers. Let me see if I have that paper. Here it is. Measured it out with some calipers. And then drew it up on a piece of paper. And then I drew it up in Inkscape as a uh, vector model. And had it laser cut out of 8th inch, or, yeah, eighth inch acrylic. That's what I got. So that mounted on. Um, and then I just got another a new couple because the couple that actually came with this, the Allen screws were stripped. So I had to drill those out and it pretty much destroyed the couple. And also this couple wasn't big enough for the motor shaft. The motor shaft is actually uh, larger in diameter than the uh, shaft for the uh, prop. So this one I got fit on the motor and in order to make it fit over the shaft for the rotor, or for the um, propeller, I had to get this little pipe and this fit over that, as you can see there, it fits over, fits over that, and this fits inside of that couple, so, um, and then I just tighten it down with the screw, and it's good to go. So that's how I did that. Um, so this is pretty much all good to go. This is all mounted nice and securely. And this will mount uh, like this in here. And then it'll shoot up the back. I already got all that stuff drilled. Um, like I said, I'm just waiting for this resin to dry. This will probably be close to 24 hours before this is completely dry. Looks like this is uh, sticking to my table here. Should probably get some newspaper or something for this. Um, anyway, so for the fiberglass I just did, I got three quarter ounce fiberglass, and then I just picked up these two little, so you got your resin and your hardener, mix those equal parts, uh, and then I actually watered it down with denatured alcohol, which is what I've heard works pretty good. And of course I did a little test piece, so I think I uh, used not enough resin on this one. Um, because I, I watered it down pretty good, but you can definitely definitely tell there's quite a difference. So I did a fiberglass part in the middle where there's no glass, but there's resin, and then just the bare balsa. So the bare balsa is very easy to like indent. This is a lot harder, and this is like a rock. So definitely does what we want to do because this this boat is structurally sound. The design of it allows um, for the wood not to like warp or anything, but it still if it impacts something, you want that extra layer of protection. So 
Yeah, that because basically what the resin does, you water it down with the, the uh, denatured alcohol, and that allows it to permeate into the wood, into the grain. Fill that. In fact, you can even see it went through. You can see those like dark spots. That's where it actually went through this piece. Um, and I didn't even really put that much on here. I actually painted it on with like a uh, Q-tip. Um, this one I use this paintbrush right here. I'm soaking it in denatured alcohol to try to get the epoxy off, so I have to buy another one for the next coat. But painted that on thick, thick, um, and I watered it down as well, like I said before, so it would permeate through the wood. And uh, yeah, so I did that. Um, after this dries, I'm going to sand it down and then do the top. Do the same thing for that, sand it down. And then after that, I'm going to do one final coat of epoxy. Uh, it's actually epoxy resin. It's called finishing resin. I'll do one final coat with that, sand that, prime it, and paint it. Um, I'll probably do the, the final sanding and priming and painting after I do the testing, because I'm going to be... The reason I'm doing this now is because I need to figure out where I'm going to mount the battery or if it's going to be batteries, because I do have two of these. So, this motor goes insanely fast just on one, but we weren't sure if we were going to be able to use that motor, so we were planning on using this and overvolting it to 14 volts. Um, so we actually picked up two of these, and these are pretty hefty, pretty hefty batteries. This is like what I use my airsoft gun. In fact, I brought the charger home to charge these uh, with it. So, I just need to figure out where I can mount this in the boat, um, how it'll affect the uh, center of gravity, how it'll float in the water, um, how, how it'll react when there's thrust applied. Like, I need to figure out how this thing's going to respond depending on where I put the battery. Um, and then I also need to see if, if it's possible to put two batteries in there and still, you know, remain afloat, you know, a decent amount. So, anyway, that's where I'm at right now. So, um, I figured I'd make an update at one point. Uh, if you're interested in building this, I actually found templates for this. That's how I made it. You, got, you, you print out the templates, cut them out. They're a little, um, I guess you call like not precise. Um, so I had to definitely do a lot of like manual filing to get them to fit. Like you'd see there's a gap there that I had to fill on the bottom ones, for example. There's a couple things like that. Um, but if you, I mean, balsa was really easy to work with as far as sanding and filing is concerned. I literally made this with a razor blade and a, a metal file, and that's it, and wood glue. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in building this hull, uh, the only thing that's different is it's not going to be flat here to mount the jet. I modified that myself, so I had to uh, file down the formers in there, and then put weight on it when I glued it. But other than that, if you just want to do a simple prop hull, or if, even if you want to do this, you could modify it like I did. I'll put the link in the description so you can look at that. Um, so yeah, this is the update. I figured I'd do an update uh, before I get too far done with it. And unfortunately, I can't really pick it up and show you. I'll definitely do that in the next video. Um, I'll probably do one or two more videos on this. So another one progressing. I'll probably do some electronics and then the operation of it. So anyway, thanks for watching.